Most of the time a foster kid shows up, possessions in tow, usually thrown into a trash bag. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, I'm Ken Ackerman. We're speaking with Dr. Tara Sanderson, Director of Operations for Shehalem Youth and Family Services, and you see this most of the time, you say, these kids that show up. Tell me how you deal with this. It's definitely a challenge for us. We navigate their, all of their belongings, put them into furniture. We give them new pillows, new sheets, new clothes, everything that we can possibly do. And then the next step is to get them a trunk, a suitcase, and a backpack so that the next placement that they move to, they don't go in, in trash bags or boxes. They go in luggage. They move like regular people. They move like everyone else. What is the profile of these kids we're talking about? All of the youth that we serve are ages 11 to 18, sometimes up to 22, depending on where they're at in their treatment. And all of them have a, a significant trauma or a significant issue that has come up in their life that has caused their, their behaviors to exceed what a normal foster family can take. So what can you do at the Shehalem Youth and Family Services to help maybe turn things around for someone? So we work on those behaviors to help them renegotiate and renavigate coming back to regular appropriate behaviors for teenagers. Mm -hmm. Our staff are rotating staff, so they, they come in every eight hours, so you don't have that same burnout that you would have with a foster parent dealing day in and day out with those same issues. Now, do you get a foster parent bringing the kids here, dropping them off, or do you see kids running away and coming? All sorts of options. Um, most of our kids are through the state, so our caseworkers work diligently to try and find them the correct placement and help them navigate the system because there are so many options with foster parenting or group home treatment. Now, I've got to tell you, to be honest, I was a mentor for four years, and I'm not going to mention where, but after they turn 18, they just let them go into the world. After, after many years in this facility, they don't have job skills. They don't know where to go. They don't have housing set up. So are things different now? Things are changing. There is a huge push towards transition age youth and helping them discover skills, even as young as 14, on how to keep and, and handle a job, how to navigate housing and life skills. We specifically at Shehalem have started a program called LIFE. It's learning independence from experience, where we hone in on how do you have a job? How do you navigate bills? What happens when your electricity gets turned off? How do you get it turned back on? What are deposits? And going through all of those skills on a daily basis, because we want them to learn to fail here. So when they fail out there, because everybody in, in inevitably does, they know how to get back up and they know how to navigate that system. You've seen poverty in an urban environment in Los Angeles. Now you see poverty here in a suburban environment. Tell me the differences. When I think of the poverty that I saw in LA, I think the people there really struggled to see how they impacted their environment, how they were a part of the problem. So they had this belief that they were better than the poverty that they were feeling. Here in, in this suburban area, or rural as far as I can tell, um, there, there's this overwhelming belief that this is just how it always is and how it always has been and that there isn't a way to make it better or different. Education is a severe component with that. We have a youth program that works with kids who have educational barriers and sometimes those educational barriers are that their family doesn't believe education is important so why go to school? So we work with them to try and help them get their GED and their high school diploma because those are employable skills. Those are things you have to have to move forward in society. Do you have to also work with family members to give them the tools to help their kids? I mean, you just mentioned family members say you don't need this you don't need this it's always going to be this way absolutely we have a lot of those conversations with family members we invite them in to see what's going on and we incentivize as much as we physically can to make it a lucrative process to get your education All right. dr. Tara Sanderson thank you very much for being with us on Comcast Newsmakers and thank you for being here as well here in the heart of the wine country in Oregon for the crew here on Comcast Newsmakers I'm Ken Ackerman make it a great day everyone.